topic. Today's topic is about uh, the uh, hidden Markov model. We finally uh, the dive into the, uh, the, uh, the formulation of the hidden Markov model problem. So today's agenda is uh, the, we actually try to uh, the formulate the HMM hidden Markov model uh, based on the EM algorithm. To do that, we actually need to kind of uh, uh, the perform the four step for this uh, the formulation. So I actually try to uh, the explain this four formulation, a uh, four step for the HMM uh, formulation, and then we move to the weekly assignment. So by the way, uh, this lecture is again uh, quite uh, the, the uh, dive into the formulation part. Uh, and someone may think that, you know, first, you know, HMM is already uh, the classical method. So it may not be very important uh, for the end-to-end -end SL. Partly, yes, if you guys are only using an attention-based method. But as, as we discussed in the CTC and the RN transducer, uh, the hard alignment problem actually still exists in our uh, the latest speech recognition technology. And currently, this is actually the, uh, the one of the standard techniques. So instead of just uh, uh, the, the skipping this part, uh, we are actually uh, the focusing on the formulation part. And another discussion would be that, do we need a formulation? We don't need a formulation. It's already, you know, someone uh, that solved it 30 years ago and already have an algorithm, right? We just implement it, which is also one option. Uh, but uh, in this uh, the lecture, I try to kind of uh, also for you guys to understand the formulation. This is based on my experience. If we try to do the research, or if we try to make a kind of new technology, uh, we actually need to build a new algorithm. In this case, we actually have to uh, the formulate the problem by ourselves. So I'm, I want you guys not to just kind of you know, uh, the making the speech recognition uh, to be uh, the, uh, uh, using the speech recognition technologies, but I also want you guys to, you know, build or make new speech recognition algorithm. So this is why I kind of try to spend the time to uh, the how to formulate the problem and so on. And I'm very sure that again, CMU from CMU, many of the technique came out. And many of the new algorithms came out from CMU, from you guys, you know, the higher generation of the you guys always created a, a state-of-the-art techniques. Uh, the, so I really want you guys to be one of them. So that's why I kind of uh, the focused on the, the formulation part a little bit. But later, after, of course, of course the formulation, we have uh, uh, the solved uh, the equation to do the kind of algorithm part. And then implementation part is mostly using the, this kind of following the algorithm. But uh, let's also try to understand this formulation part. Okay, so uh, the, the, uh, now that I move to the, uh, the, the speech recognition, uh, the, uh, the acoustic modeling part, uh, which is mainly using the HMM, so which is uh, the focusing of P or uh, given L, right? which I have kind of explained many times. And I also uh, want to kind of recap the three other uh, equations uh, had some kind of a similarity here, right? By the way, Kwangi, the last time mentioned that this other uh, equation, uh, the skipping the several condition independence assumption, you are right, actually. I found that there are a lot of condition independence assumption I kind of uh, uh, ignored. So I kind of corrected it, this one and the previous slide as well. But anyway, the, uh, the last time we discussed that every time we started from PW given O and then uh, formulating this problem, right? And this actually PW given O, it also becomes a kind of an important uh, our uh, the objective function. So uh, with this kind of our uh, the objective function, so-called likelihood, uh, we try to find the parameters that maximizing this parameter. So uh, from now on, I actually didn't kind of include the uh, model parameter, but from now on, I actually including the model parameter here and then try to kind of estimate it uh, the, the, by using the maximum likelihood. Basically, you know, uh, the, the criteria is uh, the, this one, you know, starting from this one and then try to kind of uh, find the, uh, uh, the most likely uh, parameter 
uh, based on the kind of a whatever, like uh, uh, the EM algorithm or uh, back propagation or whatever. But this lecture, we will uh, the, the use the EM algorithm to explain it. And uh, another important note is that, the, yes, uh, we will focus on the acoustic modeling part, uh, P or given L. But uh, every time, <laughs> if we have a kind of a, uh, the, uh, the condition L, that is kind of a, that we have too many uh, the 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 uh, uh, the uh, too redundant equations. So just in this lecture, we omit the kind of a, uh, the condition of the uh, the L the phoneme sequence. But this is just for the simplicity we omit it. Always you remember that this kind of a, uh, the HMM equation is given the kind of a phoneme sequences, right? But just omit it uh, to for the simplicity of the uh, the equation and so on. Okay, and then uh, the, we will kind of discuss about the uh, the four step uh, to uh, the formulate uh, this uh, HM problem with the EM algorithm. So one other uh, step is introduction of the latent variable. Second step is uh, the two other uh, the make a complete data likelihood function. And the third step is auxiliary function. And the fourth, fourth step is uh, the parameter estimation. And I will uh, explain uh, this kind of uh, the, uh, the each of the kind of a step uh, the one by one. But before moving to that, that uh, I just want to mention uh, why uh, we use the, uh, the EM algorithm, maximum likelihood EM algorithm. Uh, the, the, instead of the uh, back propagation uh, or other kind of estimation method uh, in this lecture. So first, the, the uh, EM algorithm is uh, the quite uh, the powerful uh, when uh, the, we kind of are uh, the introducing the latent variable and they are the using this kind of uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the auxiliary function form. So EM algorithm is actually with the normal uh, the, the uh, estimation process, this kind of uh, uh, the likelihood based part is very difficult, uh, but instead uh, we actually try to kind of introduce the latent variable and then using this uh, the, the auxiliary function uh, instead of a uh, likelihood function to estimate uh, this uh, the, uh, the, the parameter. So this is a kind of a, a high uh, level explanation uh, about the EM algorithm. So, and then why instead of using this kind of uh, the likelihood function, uh, we using this kind of uh, uh, the complicated form, it's that based on the kind of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, inequality, uh, the, the relationship, I will skip the uh, detail of this inequality uh, the explanation, but always uh, this uh, the likelihood function and the auxiliary function has a, this kind of a relationship. And then if the, the auxiliary functions uh, the parameter is updated, always it's corresponding to increasing the max, uh, likelihood function. So by using this kind of indirect way, we always assure that this uh, method actually uh, the, uh, the find the local uh, optimum uh, the, uh, the likelihood uh, the, the values uh, the based on this uh, the EM algorithm. So uh, the, the, the initially the people started to use the EM algorithm uh, instead of the back propagation. And the EM algorithm has uh, actually a lot of pros and cons. So first, uh, it is uh, very beautifully monotonic. So uh, the if, uh, for example, uh, the if you monitor the, your EM algorithm, and the likelihood the value is decreased, I'm very sure that it has a bug in your uh, implementation. Because EM algorithm always this step uh, the increase the likelihood. Uh, the theoretically, it is actually uh, the, the, uh, the proved. So this property is actually very good property when we uh, the, the make a kind of a system uh, and so on. It's, quite easy to debug and uh, quite easy to kind of find uh, the, 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 how much our kind of model is improved 
uh, as kind of iteration goes. I think many people here may have an experience of uh, the back propagation with the neural network, right? This is not like this, right? <laughs> if you guys did some wrong the, the hyperparameter or too many kind of uh, iteration, it's started to kind of decrease the performance, right? So EM algorithm, we don't have such. Or <laughs> if that happens, again, the, your implementation may be wrong. <laughs> so it is quite easy to debug. And when we don't have a, so much kind of uh, the computational power and so on, uh, this kind of property was very, very important so that the people started to use the EM algorithm. Uh, this approach is uh, the, also the, uh, depend on the initialization. This is actually similar to the, uh, the uh, back propagation, right? And then the uh, other kind of, a draw, one of the biggest drawback of the EM algorithm is that it cannot be uh, the, the, uh, the go to the uh, global optimum in many cases. It's just stuck to the local optimum easily. So if, for example, we set a wrong initialization and the local optimum is nearby, and then the EM algorithm is just stuck into there, and then there's no way to actually uh, the, the escape from the uh, the, the uh, this kind of local optimum, which is, the, again, different from back propagation. Back propagation, we could, fortunately, luckily, with learning parameters, uh, the, or batch size, we can actually escape from the local optimum. But the EM uh, the we cannot. So the only way to avoid the local optimum is to find a better initialization. And the, another uh, nice part of the EM algorithm is easy to dis, uh, the distribute it. Even uh, the, the, uh, the, especially, I will explain it later, but the uh, E-step part uh, is fully parallelized. So we could actually easily using the, the uh, hundreds of thousands of CPUs uh, or GPUs very easily. And then basically the performance may not be so much changed. Just a numerical uh, the, error, uh, the, the, uh, the, the difference can happen. Uh, so that is a kind of uh, the, the nice property. And uh, well, there's some bad property as well uh, of the, the EM algorithm. So initially people actually starting to use this kind of uh, the, the property and then uh, the, the making a speech recognition. Okay, so I will uh, the explain about this kind of a four step and uh, always please remember this by the four step. Uh, there are several other uh, applications that we can use for the EM uh, the algorithm like a Gaussian mixture modeling and so on. Uh, by the way, K-means is a kind of a one uh, the extreme case of the, uh, the Gaussian mixture model, and the K-means algorithm can also be interpreted as an EM algorithm. And the GMM may not be so used anymore, but the K-means, we still use it, uh, in the, especially in the, uh, the self-supervised learning. So it's good to remember uh, EM algorithm anyway. And this is uh, based on this kind of four uh, the, the step. Okay, first, uh, the, the starting from the uh, introduction of the latent variable. So this, uh, the, the, what is latent variable? It actually can be anything, but uh, this is basically unobservable value that, that, that we want to kind of introduce, and then that, that we want to use this kind of uh, the, the, uh, latent variable to actually the support to solve our problem. And then uh, the for speech, uh, the recognition problem, we actually have a very good latent variable candidate, which is alignment variable. So as we know that, uh, as we mentioned, you know, if we know the alignment problem, our problem is actually quite kind of easily tractable, right? But the alignment itself is not observable, so we have to consider it as a kind of a, a probabilistic variable. So in the HMM, we actually using this alignment variable as a probabilistic uh, variable, latent variable. Latent variable is in the word in the EM algorithm uh, the context. And then actually in speech processing, in speech recognition problem, alignment variable becomes latent variable, okay? So one, one part is uh, the, 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 uh, the easily kind of uh, the, uh, fixed. What kind of inter, uh, the latent variable uh, we should in, uh, introduce? For speech cases, we're just using the, this alignment variable that we have discussed before. Okay, by the way, uh, the, 
one kind of uh, important remark, which I kind of mentioned many times, how to introduce a new variable in the probabilistic formulation. Yes, yes, thank you so much. <laughs> now you guys remember it, right? So it was used for when we kind of are introducing the phoneme sequence. And now it is also using in the, uh, the, the introducing the latent variable, uh, alignment variable, and so on. And again, please note that they always, you know, in our cases, that uh, the the uh, the phoneme sequence is given, but we just kind of you know, omit it for the simplicity of the explanation and so on. Okay, uh, move to the next part. Uh, next, let's try to uh, the, the uh, make a complete data likelihood function. And uh, I will explain that what is complete data uh, likelihood. So in the EM algorithm uh, context, we can actually consider the latent variable. If latent variable is observed, the problem can be actually completely observed. So we could actually solve the problem easily. So in this case, for example, the O and S both are kind of observation and they are the, it's in the kind of argument cases. This is called complete data uh, the, the, and the complete data uh, likelihood. And the, the, in the mathematically, we actually introduce complete data you know, by using this kind of sum rule, right? And this other form is the complete data uh, likelihood. But uh, actually, uh, the, the, it is not the end. <laughs> this observation is you know, the sequence. Uh, the alignment variable, latent variable is sequence. So this uh, joint probability is actually quite difficult to deal with. So then that uh, we actually are uh, using the factorization and the conditional independence assumption, which we also use it a little bit in the CTC or RN transducer uh, the, the formulation. But we let's try to do that again in the uh, this other uh, HMM cases. And this one is actually not uh, so uh, the simple. Uh, the we first using the uh, product rule, uh, or uh, that we could say that the generalized version of the product rule called the chain rule, to actually uh, the convert each of the observation to this kind of form of the uh, the uh, equation. I hope everyone can understand this. Just you know, we have a two variable, joint variable, uh, the gathering together. But other than that, this is a kind of a just a simple uh, the chain rule from one and t and t one to t minus one. So if we, for example, you guys just kind of remove uh, the one of the <laughs> variable, it would be very familiar uh, chain rule for you. But just have a kind of two variable, that's it. And this is just a product to the chain rule. And then, uh, we also try to factorize this kind of a two uh, distribution from here to here, maybe not so difficult for everyone, right? Just, you know, using the product rule. And from here to here, uh, the, since we have a many <laughs> kind of a conditions, so it looks a bit, a little bit complicated, but this is also just kind of a using the, uh, the product rule and then keeping OT and the ST and the ST be, uh, the here becomes a condition and so on. So this is also a lot of kind of a condition. I apologize for that, uh, but it is the nature of this kind of problem. And, uh, but this is also still kind of product rule. And then uh, from here to here, we actually perform in a conditional independence assumption. And this is, again, you know, it is not kind of a, uh, the, the, some kind of a theory or whatever. We just assuming that uh, these are not independent with others. And again, this is a limitation of the HMM. Uh, some of the assumption is too big, right? For example, from here to here, observation is independent of the, uh, the previous observation, which is a little bit too much, right? Uh, and uh, the, uh, this uh, the alignment, uh, to get to the alignment, uh, all the entire kind of previous observation and the, uh, the 
or the kind of a state until t minus two are not dependent. It is you know uh, the not uh, the the uh, the, the, uh, the reasonable assumption, but uh, this is a way to actually solving uh, this kind of a problem. So uh, the, by doing that, we could actually uh, the, uh, the, uh, mathematically solve this uh, the problem. So this is again uh, this is an assumption. And then finally, uh, making the, uh, the 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 this kind of form of the uh, the, the equation. So first one is uh, the uh, the observation one, which is only depending on the uh, the alignment uh, state S, and then this also has a kind of a prior uh, distribution of S, and this is a kind of time step one. From the time step two, we similarly uh, the observation T is only depending on the uh, the alignment S D, but this alignment S D is depending on the previous alignments. And this is actually uh, the HMMs, uh, the one of the, uh, the, the critical uh, the, uh, the assumption. Uh, so uh, the, uh, with this kind of HM structure, we can actually uh, the, derive uh, this kind of uh, uh, the, uh, probabilistic uh, the equation uh, and so on. So from here to here, uh, quite simplified, right? So now you know uh, the, we can actually uh, the fully factorize the kind of uh, the each of the uh, the function probabilistic function uh, over the time. So it can be a kind of a good to uh, tackle uh, this kind of problem. However, what is this observation? You know, given the uh, state to generating the observation, uh, just the kind of a probability of the state. Uh, we actually have to providing the actual form of the, uh, the, the distributions for this kind of programs. Uh, by the way, uh, the, that will be explained later, but this is actually final form of the HMM. So uh, the, the, the next lecture three, we discussed this one, right? <laughs> and the, uh, and the previous kind of discussion, we introduced the alignment, right? And then uh, the previous slide, uh, we further factorized this one, right? So <laughs> this is a kind of a final form of the, uh, the speech equation solved by the, uh, the HMM uh, based approaches. Uh, so this, uh, the, 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 from he here to uh, derive here, uh, again, note that we don't use the, uh, the, any of the kind of our approximation except for the conditional independence assumption, product rule, and the sum rule. Uh, by the way, uh, the, in my laboratory, uh, we usually ask the student to derive from here to here <laughs> without checking anything. <laughs> so this is actually, actually practice. <laughs> we, we ask the student to do that. Uh, the, I think you guys had a hard time, right? So <laughs> we will have this kind of exercise later. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So uh, the, this is a kind of uh, the, the distribution. Uh, the, but the, again, this is not the, still uh, the, the actual distribution, right? So from now on, I kind of providing the, uh, the what kind of uh, distribution uh, the concrete form of the distribution uh, we should uh, the provide. And there is two options, by the way. One is to uh, the use a kind of uh, the appropriate uh, distribution, uh, the, the, which I will explain later. But the other way is, is just using it, this function uh, that represented by the neural network. So this approach uh, the, is called uh, hybrid HMM deep neural network uh, the method, because this kind of formulation itself is uh, the quite kind of HMM based approach, but each of the kind of distribution is replaced by the deep neural network. So this actually uh, approach called the hybrid HMM DNN is actually one of the standard uh, method uh, in our uh, the speech equation. But again, now it's, it is kind of gradually replaced by the 
uh, end-to-end -end edge cloud. And then that we will also be covered in our lecture. But today, uh, let's try to kind of uh, uh, use the another kind of a way, uh, which is you know setting the appropriate distribution with a tractable concrete form of the distribution, and then uh, the sort of it in the EM algorithm. Okay, so uh, the first, uh, the, the, let's focus on this other uh, distribution, PSD given ST minus one and S one, which appeared uh, here and here, right? And this one is usually uh, we just using the marginomial uh, distribution, which is kind of our, uh, the, 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 uh, the standard distribution of forming the discrete other category uh, the, the, from one to J to kind of uh, showing some kind of weight and so on. This kind of uh, uh, the other uh, problem is usually uh, the, the, uh, set by the marginomial distribution. And the nice part of the marginomial distribution is that this kind of parameter wants to have a kind of a constraint, uh, like always it has to be uh, the, uh, the, the uh, positive and it's uh, the has to be kind of a sum to one. But the uh, marginomial distribution is satisfying this kind of a condition. So that the, for this uh, the PSD given ST minus one and S1, uh, we are the usually using the, uh, the uh, marginomial distribution. And the next one, observation T uh, given uh, the ST uh, the theta. And uh, this one is actually uh, the observation is MSCC or whatever, which is a continuous vector. Okay. Previous one is actually uh, the, the using it as a kind of a discrete category and making it as a weight. But now it becomes the, uh, the continuous uh, the, the, uh, the values. And in this case, we actually using the Gaussian. Gaussian distribution, where Gaussian usually have our parameters in the mean and the covariance uh, matrix and so on. By the way, this distribution is also called emission probability because it emits the observations. And then the one kind of discussion is uh, why we use Gaussian? We could actually using the other distribution, right? We can use a gamma distribution. We can also use a student distribution. We can use a Remy distribution, uh, the Laplace distribution. There will be many kind of possible uh, the, uh, options to set the distribution. It's in the, uh, the based on the kind of uh, how to say the short tail property. Uh, it's easy to kind of uh, the the uh, the and the, the represented as an exponential, right? And then it is easy to actually uh, the, the model the, uh, the Gaussian. Correct. This kind of property is called the uh, exponential family uh, distribution. And this is actually one of the requirements. Uh, but by the way, exponential distribution, we still have other options, like a gamma distribution and so on. I don't know how many people know gamma distribution, but uh, the gamma distribution can also be an option. But uh, we don't use a gamma distribution because gamma distribution usually kind of are, are the limit the are domain only for the positive. But uh, the Gaussian distribution is actually uh, the uh, uh, domain is not bounded, minus infinity to infinity. So this is speech feature after taking a log. It's actually uh, the, uh, the can be kind of uh, the followed by this kind of uh, uh, domain. So. The domain is also another important information if we set a kind of a, a correct uh, the distribution and so on. So again, uh, the power spectrum, for example, uh, still may be good to use Gaussian because it's easy to use, but the, the, as a kind of, a, by considering the domain, probably better to uh, the, uh, model it as a gamma distribution. That the, uh, naturally satisfy the, uh, the, uh, the, the non-negative constraint. Uh, but anyway, the, there are some kind of uh, the uh, the uh, knowledge. What kind of distribution we should set for the kind of each of the distribution and so on. But anyway, uh, the, the, luckily we have a Gaussian, uh, which is a kind of a, a very useful function to mostly kind of cover many of the 
uh, the problem and so on. And I kind of are uh, writing the two kind of other uh, 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 Gaussian distribution. One is that probably the, this is the kind of most people know this one, right? Just a, a normal uh, the covariance matrix. But in the, I think some of you here may you know, take the machine learning courses and they may know that uh, covariance matrix is actually very difficult to estimate uh, or very difficult to deal with. The computational cost is very large. So instead, uh, in our machine learning problem, we quite often use uh, the co uh, diagonal covariance. So this is means that the, the, there's no kind of a, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the zero in the off diagonal element and only non-zero uh, the, the value in the diagonal element. And uh, it also should be positive. Uh, uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the uh, type of the Gaussian is called the Gaussian distribution with the diagonal covariance in my lecture. And this is actually quite uh, the, the easy. Once it is diagonal, even by the way, we can factorize it with the, each of the dimension uh, because we don't care about the, uh, the correlation and so on. So the, uh, the uh, equation is rather simple. It's just a kind of a, a multiplication of the scalar uh, single Gaussian uh, distribution and so on. And then uh, let's uh, the, the discuss about the, uh, the diagonal covariance versus group covariance. So, Diagonal covariance, since it is, you know, uh, the of diagonal element is zero. So it's actually have a limitation of uh, the covering the kind of uh, information. Like for example, diagonal and the full, the most difficult uh, different part is that the full can actually change the kind of a tilting. <laughs> so this kind of a freedom, it, this is only uh, the, free, uh, the degree of freedom. It, in only kind of a two dimensional case, it's just one. But if it is actually the uh, many dimension, this kind of flexibility is very kind of a cool. However, this actually uh, the increase the number of parameters a lot, and the computational uh, parameters a lot. So that is a kind of a issue if we try to deal with a huge number of uh, the the, uh, the data uh, in our cases. Uh, like for example, this is the actual. Uh, the distribution of the MSCC, but the to uh, the make it kind of uh, easily visualized, I only extract one and two dimension. It's uh, the, the original one is the, the modern uh, the ten dimension, uh, and the single Gaussian to try to fit it. Um, I think it's not very well fit, right? And uh, full covariance that since we can make the tilting it, so it's Actually, not very bad, but uh, in the actual kind of a problem, we often using the uh, multiple Gaussians, but diagonal covariance. This is actually a way to kind of efficiently uh, modeling uh, our data pattern and so on. So it, not only for speech, many of the engineering problem, we often using the uh, multiple Gaussian with uh, dynam uh, uh, diagonal covariance. Again, full covariance can be more accurate, but it has many parameters and it's difficult to deal with. So this is quite often uh, the people are using it. And this kind of multiple Gaussian based uh, the, the, the distribution is called uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Gaussian mixture, Gaussian mixture uh, model and so on. So Gaussian mixture model has an additional parameter, which is the number of Gaussian. In this case, is K equals four. And then uh, the, this uh, the weight is also kind of a satisfying with the, uh, the del, del to one and the, uh, sum to one condition. So it is uh, normally actually uh, represented by the uh, marginal, marginal distribution and so on. But anyway, again, the, the, in our engineering program, we often using a Gaussian mixture, but we often use a diagonal covariance. Okay, but in the following uh, the formulation, Gaussian mixture is a little bit complicated. So as you see, we already have a lot of uh, the, the variable in the formulation, right? So I kind of uh, the omit the Gaussian mixture and then a single Gaussian and then uh, continue the kind of formulation. Uh, but uh, uh, the later I will extend it to the Gaussian mixture model. And practically we're using a Gaussian mixture model. 
But from the following, uh, the, in the formulation, I use a single Gaussian distribution, okay? So, uh, the, yeah, this is a kind of summary that now, you know, uh, these kind of equations is replaced by the Gaussian distribution and the other, uh, the, the, some kind of weight parameter, which is other also uh, that we can call it marginal distribution. So now uh, these are the equations are actually distributed, uh, so represented of the concrete form of the distribution. However, uh, we didn't talk about, you know, how to estimate uh, these parameters, right? Mean, uh, diagonal variance, and this weight parameters and so on. So this is the target uh, of this lecture. Hope it will be finished in this uh, the lecture. If not, I will continue in the next week. Okay, uh, the, to solve this one, this uh, actually problem, uh, estimation problem is not very easy. And we actually, as I mentioned, we have to use the EM algorithm. And to use the EM algorithm, uh, we use the auxiliary function that I defined before. And the first part is I just kind of write the definition of the auxiliary function here, uh, listed in the, uh, the, the my kind of uh, the, uh, previous note in the lecture, introducing the, uh, the latent variable and so on. And look at this one, P of given S theta. This is uh, the, uh, the, the distribution that we deal deal with in the uh, previous step, right? Now we kind of know the way to uh, the, the represent this one with a Gaussian distribution and the marginal distribution here. Apologize, it is very small, but uh, if you uh, the, uh, go to the uh, previous slide, you guys can check the detailed one, right? So how to uh, the, the, the further formulate this one, of course, we can just substitute this one to this P O uh, S uh, given theta, right? So let's do that. And then uh, the, we actually can uh, the decompose this uh, the distribution to the three component. One is the, the, the initial weight, the other is the transition weight, and the third part is uh, Gaussian. So this uh, the equation uh, change is not uh, very difficult, just using the, uh, just changing the, uh, the, since it is product here, right? And the product inside the log means that it becomes a summation, right? So it's just kind of, you know, uh, the, the split to the each term, that's it. I didn't do anything. Okay, and actually this, each of the term is very difficult to uh, solve in general. I will mention the reason. This is because we have a summation over sequence. So we couldn't basically solve this one. So, but fortunately, this form is actually having a solution. So, miraculously, we have a solution. So I will show you that. So to do that, we actually using the three kind of technique. One is the sequence decomposition. The other is the distributive property. And the third one is that uh, uh, the, our kind of uh, the, the open use sum rule. And these three are just a kind of, you know, rewriting the equation. It's not like uh, doing some kind of rule and so on. And I will explain it one by one. So first part, sequence decomposition. So anyway, sequence is a kind of an issue. Because it is, you know, uh, the very kind of uh, the complicated, right? And it's, you know, like you know, one to T, and in our case, it's alignment, right? And it's, uh, the, the, again, just, uh, the, the dealing with the sequence is always difficult, challenging. Uh, but the, uh, the, for example, one of the equations here is actually extracted from the, uh, the previous slide, uh, the, uh, this part, or the other part in this other part. So anyway, uh, the, in this example, uh, this part is only depending on the S1. Right, and in this part, only uh, this part is depending on the st minus one to st. Uh, among all kind of sequence, only kind of are uh, depending on the s one or only depending on two kind of other uh, variable. So in these cases, 
for the kind of later uh, the, the uh, pasteurization, it is better to kind of split the sequence to like a S1 and S2 to T, or uh, the S1, uh, this one, S1 to T minus two, just sub sequence, and then ST minus one, ST, and then T plus one to T sub sequence. I don't do anything, but I just kind of know uh, that rewriting this sequence. Okay. I think I people understand it, right? Yeah. Just rewriting, but this is important. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, sequence is directly uh, the dealing with the sequence is very difficult. Uh, so just uh, the, the using this trick to rewrite the sequence. And then after uh, rewriting the sequence, that becomes actually this first equation. I, I didn't do anything, but it's just rewriting S1 to uh, and S2 to T. By the way, we start uh, corresponding summation is also I just kind of other uh, these three. These are kind of fast trick. And the second part uh, is a uh, distributed property. This is actually very cool. <laughs> I, I think everyone knows, but they, they, for this kind of problem, very cool. So I want to spend the uh, data some time. So anyway, uh, the, our kind of a problem is that the summation over the sequence, which is almost impossible for us to solve. So like, for example, uh, just a, a one example, let's say this kind of S is, you know, uh, the, the, we only consider the three states. And the sequence length is, for example, 200. And if this is 10 milliseconds, it's only two seconds. Only two seconds and the three kind of uh, the state of the sequence. The, the, actually, the, the, the number of sequence would be many, quite large. I can compute it. Um, three to the power of 200, right? <laughs> <laughs> we cannot use it in the computer, right? Only three category. And then only two seconds of the, uh, the, uh, the, the speech sample. We cannot actually deal with all possible elements. So uh, the, basically, if uh, the, the summation over the sequence appears, we have to try to avoid this one. And then uh, the one of the kind of a cool direction to solve this one is that distributed uh, property. And the distributed property is uh, the very simple, and I believe everyone knows it, right? Uh, here, one example, right? We can compute uh, AX plus AY, but uh, this is, you know, uh, factorized with A, and then uh, we actually can reduce the computational cost, right? And uh, this is a super simple example, but the, uh, the more little bit complicated is A, F, N, and the summation over N. One way is, you know, uh, directly computing this one, but since A is not uh, depending on the N, so we can actually uh, factorize it, and then we only compute this one. We don't have to compute the A times AFN every time, right? The number of multiplication is at a quite large radius. And a bit more kind of a, uh, the general form, but still uh, this is true. We have a two function, F, N, and G, M, and the summation over N and M. So this one is also looks very complicated, but it's actually can factorize it and then take the summation for each of them. And we actually can reduce the computational cost, right? I just write a kind of a, a pseudocode. <laughs> so if there's no distributed property in the world, and then we actually have to compute this kind of a double loop, NM. But by using the distributed property, we can actually, you know, the performing the summation once, twice, and uh, only have uh, uh, the, uh, the, the computation cost of is the n plus m and so on, right? So this actually uh, the property is used in our 
uh, the, the summation uh, the, uh, the problem. And then uh, the making this, the previous equation could be somehow tractable. So this is actually uh, the, the, uh, the, this part. So from here to here, as you can see that uh, this one is only depending on the S1, right? Not depending on the S2T, right? So we can actually uh, the change the kind of our, uh, this part to be inserted here and factorizing this part. Okay, very cool, right? Uh, but uh, this part, the, the the sequence decomposition, just rewriting the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sequence and the distributed properties, it, 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 it just kind of you know, changing the kind of our order, right? Although this is very important. Otherwise, you know, we can solve that. Uh, we always have to solve the kind of all kind of a possible sequence. And then now from here to here, we can actually using our sum rule. So please look at this one. S2T, oh, this summation of S2T. Now we can use a sum rule, right? We can actually marginalize out everything. So now uh, this is the result. So there is no summation over the sequence, right? Uh, and then only have a kind of a, uh, the, this, uh, the pi S1 and the PS1 all given theta. By the way, how to uh, the solve this one is actually in the next week. So this is actually not easy, but we can still make it solve it. But uh, yeah, luckily we can actually uh, solve this one without uh, uh, considering the all possible uh, the summation. So this is actually the, the one reason that the EM algorithm, HMM is used. If we have other kind of our conditions and so on, actually we couldn't find this kind of a property and then we couldn't avoid the summation over the sequence. But this kind of HMM and the EM, EM algorithm combination, magically, miraculously, luckily, we can find this kind of a solution. Okay, so the this is just for the uh, one of the part uh, of this kind of our, uh, the auxiliary function. So let's go through the same kind of our, uh, the formulation to the all other part. And the next uh, the target is transition weight. And uh, this one is, again, uh, we just using the uh, technique that I mentioned to solve this kind of a problem. So we actually using the exactly same technique. Sequence decomposition to uh, the, 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 just rewriting the sequence to the one to t minus two, st minus one, st, and the sub sequence of t minus one plus t. And then uh, the after that, we actually using the, uh, the distributed property. And then this log part is uh, the, uh, the moving here. And then now let's cook this one. And actually we can use the sum rule to marginalize uh, the order kind of a variable. And then uh, look at this one. There's no summation over the sequence, right? <laughs> yeah, the, I was very impressed, <laughs> but some of you uh, maybe just kind of uh, they are trivial, but I was very impressed by this uh, the equation, yeah. And uh, we can do the same thing uh, for the other, uh, 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 Gaussian uh, the part uh, and so on. And I just skipping the kind of uh, uh, the, the derivation and the skipping means probably this is the homework. <laughs> I don't really remember, but probably that is the homework. Yeah, but uh, by the way, uh, the, this one also, this part is, you know, we are familiar, but this part is still not familiar. We don't know how to kind of obtain it. Again, that part, I will explain it in the next week. And the same for the state transition. Uh, this part is, I already explained, you know, we just use a marginomial distribution based on the state transition, but this part, I didn't uh, explain it. And this will be explained in next week. So this is actually a summary of the auxiliary function. So initially this one is the summation over the sequence, which we cannot solve. Uh, the, 
But uh, well, if we have you know uh, 10 to the, uh, the power of 92 or something like that of the memory, we can solve it. But the, otherwise, we can solve it. But uh, by using this uh, the, the uh, equation, uh, the, the uh, auxiliary function, we could actually uh, the remove all the kinds of summation over the sequence and then make the, this kind of computation tractable. Uh, very cool. Uh, however, I didn't mention about, you know, how to kind of solve this part. So that I will explain it in the later in the forward backward algorithm. And the last part is a parameter estimation. Actually, given this kind of other form, we could actually easily other estimate the solution of the parameter. So uh, what we will do is actually uh, the, the directly getting the derivative and, and, and then equal zero to get the kind of uh, all the kind of uh, the pi, uh, the a, mu j, and rj, which is a kind of uh, parameters uh, in a problem that can be actually solved by the uh, the this uh, the, the uh, parameter estimation method and so on. Uh, by the way, I think I didn't mention uh, I used the uh, uh, diagonal covariance Gaussian with a vector form, which is a little bit different from other people's uh, the notation. So please make sure this one is, you know, uh, the vector. Uh, it, go, covariance matrix should be matrix. Uh, yes, I know, but the, this is my definition. And this means that, you know, vector, each vector corresponds to the diagonal component. And there is a, the actual definition in the uh, previous my slide and so on. So please do not confuse and so on. Uh, by the way, how to solve it and how to uh, derive these solutions are, are the one of the homework. <laughs> so uh, this the, this week's the, the weekly assignment is a little bit kind of difficult, but I uh, hope you guys can uh, the, the understand it. By the way, when solving this one, maybe I can explain it later in the weekly assignment. Uh, so I, I will skip it. Okay, so uh, the, I can finish it. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we will still have to explain the weekly assignment. So uh, the, the, uh, the wait of a while. It's until 50, right? Yeah, we still have a, uh, more than 10 minutes. So I can explain it. So now that I use a kind of a bit mass and then the uh, the the, uh, the uh, the, the further kind of uh, the uh, make the kind of speech equation uh, problem to be uh, the tractable uh, based on the EM algorithm. And I explained the this kind of four step, uh, the introduction of the latent variable, uh, complete data likelihood, auxiliary function, which I spend probably more uh, the longest uh, the, since you know summation over the sequence is a kind of quite uh, uh, difficult. Uh, uh, which is kind of elegantly actually avoided in this formulation. And then parameter estimation, but I quickly mentioned it, but it can be actually one of the homework. Uh, however, I still didn't touch, for example, uh, the some of the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the variables that introduced the during the E-step, which I will explain it in the next week. By the way, we also have to sometimes get to compute this value. And uh, here we also have a summation over sequence and uh, we will also have to avoid it. That we will also uh, the explain the next week. But basically, uh, please remember that once these guys appeared, we should be very careful about it. <laughs>